Yo, what up? I'll be going over a Akiba strip, undead and undressed. All right, so stick around. Hope you guys enjoy. We're going in this butt naked. All right, <laughs> let's do this. Alright, so Akiba Strip, available in uh, Steam, that's where I purchased it and played it, is actually the second one in the series of Akiba Strip. Uh, the first one being on PlayStation Portable, I looked it up, it looks like I have different characters, and then this one being the second one. There's a third one being released soon. So, so basically you start off with a uh, no-name character, you can change his name from whatever it was, and then uh, dress him up, but you really don't have shit starting off, so. Going into the game, though... Hold on. Sorry about that. But going into the game, uh, your character is tra strapped to a table and this guy's trying to rape you. Basically, nah. They transform you to something known as synthesizer. Um, to be honest, man, I just want them to save vampire. They don't even fucking ever save vampire. They're vampires. They die if they're exposed to sunlight, if all their clothes come off. They have to drink energy from people. And they're super powerful. They're fucking vampires, man. But whatever. So this girl saves you from the table. You had to kick ass. Uh, the battle system is a little rough. Not the greatest, but it's still pretty fun, man. I enjoyed it. But uh, overall, when the girl saves you, you're losing energy because you're not fully, completely a synthesizer. So guess what? She pours blood into your mouth by kissing you. Whoa. That's it. That's how she did it. So yeah, she's turned you into a vampire. They don't ever want to say it, but they're a vampire. Anyways, you have a phone and you can look at emails from your friends that send you. They're all worried about you. Like, what the fuck you been, bro? Why don't you hit me up, bro? Shit like that. And other apps will be available on throughout the phone as you progress in the story. So you can hang out in Akiba. You, could, you actually can see all the shops that they have. Apparently, it's very accurate uh, what shops they actually have in Akiba. I've never been there, man. I've never been to Japan. But uh, it'll be great to go see. But uh, yeah, you can do stuff, buy food, buy new weapons, uh, the weapons, yeah. There's three different categories that I categorize. You have your long sword kind of weapons, you have your fast medium weapons, and then you have your kind of fist type weapons. I prefer to stick with the medium type, because the long ones are too slow, and then the fast ones are too non... You need more power behind it, so. Basically, you head out to uh, this place, I forget what they called it, but all your homies are there. They're all worried about you, and you, you know, you tell them about, hey, I got turned into a vampire. Never say vampire, but whatever, you know what I mean, a synthesizer. So, your homies are all worried about you, they're like, what up, bro, we gotta fucking patrol the streets of Akiba to make sure no one gets eaten by these things. That's basically the nutshell of the story. You gotta protect this city, where all these otakus hang out, nerds about anime and shit, so... Uh, there is kind of a main villain. I'm not really sure. I'm gonna, I'm gonna give it away, cause, but it's pretty much a cliche story. Babe, yeah, you gotta drag these people into alleyways, beat the shit out of them, and take off their clothes to, you know, make sure they're synthesizers or whatever. Um, in the beginning, you don't know who's who, but later on, you get an app that you can take a picture and you know, oh, that's a synthesizer. Let's gang up on it. But yeah, but you can just go around undressing people. So let's do this. So the main character is you, bro. It's you, man. 
there's no name unless you keep the name that they gave him. But you could change his name, and that's what they'll call you. But it's basically you. Um, when you finish the game, though, you could come back and uh, switch his gender. But in the story, you'll still be a man. So not really a point to it, but you could dress him up as girls' clothes, guys' clothes, all kind of clothes. It's all there for you. Oh, sorry. It's all there for you to enjoy and play this game as many times as you want. Um, I felt like it was kind of a grind, but it's okay, man. It, it, it's worth undressing people and killing them in, with sunlight. So, that's always good to do, man. Uh, the next character is the girl that saves you from that table. Her name is fucking slow as fuck. Jizuku. So, she saves you. She has purple hair with braids and cute little dress. Anyways, she's uh, part of a van... I want to say vampire. Well, that's what she is. A vampire clan. And she's there to stop these synthesizers because that's her job. And that's how you basically meet. Because she's there to stop them from turning you into one. Blah, blah, blah. She rolls with you, man. Anyways, next character is your sister. Or the main character sister, Nana. She's a straight up otaku. Role plays like crazy. You guys ever seen that show? Chinobu and uh, whatever. Well, that's basically her. <laughs> but she's a little bit cooler, though. Uh, she's also acts as a person you can buy stuff from, sell stuff to, or craft even more powerful weapons. So that's badass. But she does send you on some stupid errands. And it's kind of hinted that she likes you more than a brother. You know? Yeah. Anyways. Next character is your childhood friend, Toko. Or Tonko. Or whatever how you say it. She's been with you. She's uh, I don't know if she's that straight up otaku, but she's there, hangs out. She's a great fighter. She reminds me of Tifa a lot because her weapons are gloves. And she's a straight up fighter. You can take her out on a mission with you and shit like that. Oh, by the way, all these girls you could take out on a mission. All right. Also, romance options, but that was kind of hard. But like I said, she's a straight fighter, speaks her mind, but she still hangs out with the guys, you know. Uh, our next girl is uh, Executive Shion Kazukai. And I was like, bam, like that. She's the hottest woman in this game. Badass. Fights with her handbag. Probably Gucci. Um, she runs this pharmaceutical company. And she's also investigating the uh, the things. The fucking vampires. Or fucking synthesizers. <laughs> and yeah. A lot of people suspect her. But you know. I'm not going to give it away. But she is hot right. Anyways. Going on with the next character. Rin. She's actually a pop star idol. She plays in the streets of Akiba. She's there. Later on, you get her as a companion, but it takes a while. Don't worry. Um, some, well, you could tell by the last name if you haven't figured it out, but whatever. But she's really uh, different from her pop idol persona when you meet her, so we be ready for that shit, right? And then the last character we have is a transfer student, Kati. She's from Finland or Sweden. Sweden. I'm not really 100% sure. I'm pretty sure of Finland, she said. Uh, blonde hair. She's not from Japan. Not many people in Japan have blonde hair, apparently. And then um, she's there to study anime. She's straight up otaku as well, but she works at the bar you guys hang out in. And uh, yeah, that's about it, man. I'm lying. There's also your bros. You have this guy named Kati Kaito. He's a straight up otaku like you are. He's your bro. And he has a twin brother with him. And uh, he'll pop up right now so I can tell you his name. His brother is actually the smart one, Yutu Tachibana. He's a smart bro. He knows everything. He's the guy you go to. Give him a call. He come over. And then you got the guy who runs the bar where the kids hang out. His name is just Pops. Yeah. Kind of looks like Sid from Final Fantasy with that fucking headband, bro. But whatever. But that's basically the nutshell and all the characters you get besides the villains, you know. And they all hang out in the bar. He's a good guy. Don't worry. So, like I said, man, this, this game was alright, man. <laughs> Stripping people, man, that's always funny. You know, I, that's what got me to the game. I was like browsing and shit, and I was like, what is this? Akibus strip? You know, undead and something? I'm like, oh, let's play this shit, you know? Might be fun. But yeah, you develop different moves. You get this ultimate move and shit like that, which helps you undress people a lot faster. Because trust me, it gets harder when you're one on one in this game, is easy. But when you go like one on seven, you, it's going to be a t challenge, man. Even if you have a partner, their clothes can come off. Your clothes can come off. If your entire outfit gets taken away, man, you're done. 
That's it. That's how this game rolls. So anyways, uh, like I told you guys, this is not the first one in the title, but this is the only one we could get on PC. I don't have a fucking PlayStation Portable anymore. But, um, yeah, this these look like the characters from the first one. This is the picture I got, and I did some checking up. I think these are the main characters from the PlayStation Portable one. They look a little bit different from this one. I don't know the the stories are the same or what. There was no fucking uh, info on the PlayStation Portable one. No one talks about it. I don't think it might have been a good game. Not many people liked it. I don't know. But uh, this this basically looks like our lineup, right? You have um, the main character that rescues you, the dude that you play, the two twin brothers, and this guy down here. I don't know who that is. Then you have the executive woman in the back, and then the maid that works at the shop. This looks like our same lineup. I don't know. Like I said, I never played the PlayStation Portal, but I just played this one. So, overall, no, the game was <laughs> pretty fun. I mean, did I feel like it dragged on? No. Did, it, did I feel like I had to finish it, even though I didn't like it? No, I actually quite enjoyed playing it. The grind was kind of annoying, because you have to level up and your weapons, too. But I actually enjoyed playing it. The story is where I had the biggest issue. It was kind of like a cliche story. I felt like they dragged it on just to make the game. They could have just made it into anime. It probably would have been better. Or it, a better story, you know? I just felt like... And also, another question. Where the fuck these kids hang out in the bar? But whatever. That's besides this point. But, I mean, overall the battle system's okay. I give it a pass, I guess. It was kind of fun. So I have to give it a game a good average score, 6. Slightly above average, man. Just slightly. The story kind of knocks it down because it wasn't much of a story. But uh, it's a great game. Uh, replay value, maybe, just because you could change your character and make him a girl or make him another dude and switch him different outfits, make him more powerful and shit. That was fun. But, um, yeah, man, thanks for watching. I hope you guys enjoy. Hit that like, hit that sub. See you all next time.